a new one, but I'm also known as Tiny Girl Eats World over on Instagram where you can find me sharing the best eats. I've travelled the globe to try different cuisines from the hawker centres in Singapore to the local food that Samoan people eat. There is an amazing world of food out there, but in this series I'm bringing you the world in your kitchen. Today I'm at Santo Remedio, a Mexican restaurant in the heart of London owned by Edson Diaz Fuentes and Natalie Fury. So thank you to the both of you for having me here today. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And you've made this lovely looking dish. So do you mind explaining what you've made today? Yes, well those are um, tacos dorados, um, barbacoa, lamb shank barbacoa tacos dorados. They're crispy rolled tacos. And um, barbacoa is one of the most traditional dishes in Mexican cooking, um, usually celebrations. Um, and the traditional way of cooking that is on the ground, covered with maguey leaves. Each, uh, one of the most traditional states for barbacoa is Hidalgo in central Mexico. Um, but there are other states that they do barbacoa their own way. Some with um, cow, some with lamb. Um, in this case, we prepare our lamb shank barbacoa here at the restaurant and literally just shred it and do the rolled taquitos. Perfect. Yeah, so I got to see a little bit of you making it downstairs in the kitchen. And is this a dish that you typically serve at the restaurant or is it just a special thing for today? To be honest, what's a special thing for today? We have done in the past um, crispy roll tacos, some of them larger version called flautas. Um, but because we have the lamb shank and I know that lamb shank is very popular and the, here with Sunday roast, I think that this is a very good recipe for, so people can use the leftovers of the Sunday roast and with good um, corn tortillas they can roll it and make at home this same dish that is very typical for Mexico. That, that looks great and I saw you use some different ingredients downstairs. Yeah. Do you mind explaining the ingredients that go into making this dish? Mexican food is about um, slow cook, marinades. The marinade is made with three different kinds of chilies. So we marinate the lamb overnight and then we cook it in the oven for about three to four hours. Um, the marinade is made with oil, garlic, onion, three different kinds of chilies, including pasilla, ancho and morita. We blend all in the, in the blender and rub the meat, leave it to rest for, um, for the night and then put it in the oven. Um, that's so the, the meat is super tender. Um, and spice, not overpowering, and then shred the meat so we can fill the, 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 the tortillas. That's perfect. And is this something that you can eat as street food or is it something that's more prepared at home? Well, I remember when I would go to visit family in Mexico, I would go to the market with them on a Sunday and I remember these were always my favourite tacos to yeah. eat um, because obviously it's something that's you can eat with your hands because it's already made in the in the tacos. As Edson said, barbacoa is a really traditional dish, a slow cook dish. I remember that's why it was one of my favorite things because it's the crispy tacos, but with that extra special filling. Yeah. Um, so it was like a Sunday treat where like we were saying, somebody would have a Sunday roast, a slow cooked meat, and it's sort of the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. So you've got that really special lamb that's been prepared, but in that style of the crispy tacos that's quick and easy to eat that just makes it all the more delicious. Yeah. I remember being in Mexico City, you go to the market and you see a pile of these rolled tacos, you know, just there ready for ordering like two or three. And then as a kid, obviously, sometimes you cannot handle spicy salsa. So the good thing about Mexican food is like sharing. It's fast food in a way because you can eat, you know, in front of the taquero of the lady or the barbacoa guy. But that barbacoa took a few hours, if not, you know, the whole night to cook, you know, um, on the ground. And then um, you have the tacos, you order the tacos and you top with whatever salsa you, you want. Yeah. So in this case, it was an avocado salsa, which is fresh and cream. I grew up here in England, but I would always go to Mexico on holiday to visit my grandparents at Christmas or in summer holidays. And I remember that you would go in the morning to the markets. I'd go with my grandmother to the market, spend the morning shopping, as Edson mentioned, having a few snacks on the way, then coming back. And I remember it feeling like an eternity before it was time to eat, because obviously here we eat lunch 
you know, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, and Mexico lunch is at three, and it would be a three course meal. You know, it was, you'd have like a soup to start with, then a main dish that you would eat, a guisado, which would be, you know, like the meat and, and some sides with tortillas or bread on the side, and then whatever you wanted for dessert. So, with you only going back once a year to Mexico, were you born here, were you born there, and is that the same for you, Edson? So, I was born here in England. My father was English and my mother's Mexican, um, and we would travel once a year, probably for the whole of the summer holidays or for Christmas. So, obviously, it was a, you know, it was a really special occasion. The whole family would come to the airport to collect us in three cars just to collect me and my mum. So it was this really big affair. And like I said, because sometimes we'd go in the summer when it was my birthday or in Christmas when it's Christmas, there'd always be some sort of big celebration party happening. So what was it like growing up in Mexico then? Well, I'm from Mexico City, I'm born and raised. And I remember when going to primary school that my mom we used to walk from the flat to the to the school, and there was a lady in the corner that she was preparing tamales. And tamales are like um, um, steamed um, corn parcels uh, filled with most of the time protein, pork, chicken with mole, or rajas con queso, or different kind of fillings. And I remember just grabbing that was my lunch at at school. So imagine me going to school and it was very traumatic when I, the, la the lady wasn't there mm -hmm. and I was literally craving for my, my tamales at lunchtime. Oh, so yeah. um, I think that Mexicans, we grow up with fresh food available, traditional festivities, grandma cooking, mom cooking. So literally food is implicit in our childhood. And I would love to hear a little bit more about the traditional festivities that you have there because clearly food's a very central element to them. So what kind of festivities would there be? Is there examples of holidays or celebrations that you have there? Yes, um, a lot of these festivities are linked to um, religious background. Um, and a lot of these festivities are just cultural festivities that we follow. And um, well, it could be a birthday, it could be a wedding, could be also a funeral and we turn those occasions into a festivity. So Natalie, um, conversely, growing up here, would you still go through the same process of preparing a meal for days prior to a birthday, you know, a wedding? How is it different? Because in Mexico, you would have access to all these ingredients, whereas here, it's a little bit harder to get access to those traditional ingredients. Yes, well, actually, when I was growing up, it was not just difficult, it was impossible. You couldn't even get tortillas, you couldn't get chilies, you couldn't get anything. So. Actually, this dish that Edson cooked, these crispy tacos, was actually one of the few dishes I would have in England growing up. So you can fill the crispy tacos with chicken or how we've served them here at the restaurant with potato. And that would be such a treat for me. Whereas, you know, for people growing up in Mexico, it was probably what they would have once a week, their comfort food. And actually, interestingly, obviously here, Turkey is a traditional thing for Christmas, but in Mexico, it's such a huge country with so many um, different traditions, so many different regions, so many different um, cultures, because you know Mexico is a mix of the Spanish that went to Mexico and then all the different indigenous groups that were there before that, you know, before the Spanish went to Mexico, there wasn't just one group of Mexicans. There was the Aztecs, there was the Toltecs, all these different, groups that had their traditions. So for example, in Mexico City, a traditional Christmas meal is bacalao, which is a salted fish uh, with tomato. made this really lovely dish for um, me to try today but it's not on your normal restaurant menu so what inspired you to make this this is one of my of my memories I had of my childhood in Mexico because it is very traditional to have tacos dorados this is the proper name yeah. and when you have a bigger tortilla larger to say it's called flauta um, but tacos dorados is something that you have at your dinner table when you're a kid, normally with chicken. So we're sitting here in this gorgeous space of yours, right in the heart of central London. What inspired you to start this restaurant? 
Well, for me, it was the inspiration and the fact that when I first came here over 10 years ago, Mexican food wasn't available. Um, and obviously I wanted to showcase my, the cuisine I grew up with. Slowly, slowly, I could, the, the, the producers were reaching the UK. I could get some ingredients. We can start substituting things. And I think that um, just the desire of bringing a little bit of the culture and the cuisine I grew up with, um, that was a, the, the main inspiration, to be honest. And it's doing it in London allowed us to showcase the diversity of Mexican food, tacos, aguachiles, ceviches, moles, um, sandwiches called tortas. So it's, not, it's more about tacos. A lot of people have a perception that tacos is the only, you know, yeah. Mexican um, dish. Mexican food has become a lot more mainstream yeah. in the UK, but could you give us some examples of dishes from your menu that you made to try and highlight some more authentic Mexican food? We have four belly tacos that um, are just like Mexico City mm -hmm. taco stands, and a lot of people come here and say, this reminds me of Mexico, and that's what we want. When we hear you know, comments like that, that yeah. makes us happy. And um, because it's all about the right tortilla, the right protein and the salsa. And we try to replicate that. So it's an amazing achievement that you set up this restaurant, but what are the next steps for Santo Remedio? We've also started our own line of retail products, our own tortillas, our own salsa, salsa matcha, which is, you know, the equivalent of like a chili oil with seeds and nuts and dried chilies. Because like Edson was saying, what we really want is people to experience what Mexico is like. So when they come to the restaurant, we want them to feel like they've been transported to Mexico with the cocktails, with the music, with the food, with the decor, with the hospitality. I think that it's just time for us to try the barbacoa tacos, dorados. Yeah, great, I'll just slide that over. Oh, it looks so good. The um, salsa on top looks so vibrant mm. and lovely. It is so good. <laughs> you know, Mexican yeah. cuisine is actually something that's full of you know, yeah. nutritious value and is so good for you, like the avocado yeah. in, this, in this salsa, yeah, the salsa, yeah. the lettuce, the freshness mm -hmm. of the flavors. So it's a combination of the smoky chilies, yeah. um, obviously the tortillas, and then, and then the vibrancy of, of the salsas with, yeah. with the lime and the chilies and the herbs. Mm -hmm.